the, the product itself is really has one foot in the uh, in the blockchain world and one chain in the uh, sorry one foot in what I call the real world. Um, and, and because of that, <clears throat> you know, we're able to onboard licensors and partners like Marvel, and Star Trek, and all these other brands. Um, and then on the other side, we can start to build in um, the uh, the crypto side. So <clears throat> the you know really the idea is to to have the ability for our our fans to. Uh, if they're in the crypto space, then they can um, uh, purchase some OMI and then use OMI within the app. And some of the features we have coming up are things like uh, OMI to NFT or using OMI to <clears throat> purchase accessories. Or you, uh, once the VBverse comes out, you will have the ability to use your OMI to purchase land. So we've we've it's been a little bit of a blessing and a curse that it has taken a while for us to get uh to this point of utility uh the the curse side of it is obviously um you know all the haters out there but we do have a longer term vision and the blessing side of it is that you know we've really been able to take stock of how users are using vv and you know really uh, especially with reese's help is to reach out to the community and get a really a good understanding of what kind of features that they would want to see when it comes to the over utility so uh, that was the first part. Now, just to touch on the metaverse. So from our perspective, the, the metaverse is some form of open world that uh, can have a multitude of users in that world and they can interact with each other in you know, whatever features or functionality that that metaverse has. And I really believe that we're probably on the precipice of <clears throat> seeing a significantly more, uh, you know, metaverse is coming into existence. Uh, obviously, it's been a buzzword for, you know, the past few months now. And, you know, for us, the VVverse, we kicked off last year. And, and again, really wanted to have uh, something out by now. But uh, obviously, we've been fairly busy on the, the, uh, the crazy, insane growth. So for the, for the VVverse, really... You know, from our perspective, it, it needs to come again from a point of collectability. And, you know, a lot of the uh, a, a really big emphasis in the world of collectibles is is, is being social. You know, you, you get that cool collectible, you want to show it off, you want others to see it. You want the glory for getting that ultra rare on the drop or the secret rare. So <clears throat> the the idea really is to expand upon what we have in the app right now. And for those of you users that don't know, uh, each VV user can create um, a, sh a virtual showroom within their within their account. And within that, they can then place all of their collectibles and set it up in, in the way that they want. So the, the, the uh, first iteration of the VVverse will be a, a huge expansion onto those showrooms that will give, you know, much greater customization. And for me personally, you know, I really think that one day, all of us will have some form of, you know, little 3D world that is very much personalized to us in the same way that, you know, my Facebook page or my Instagram page is personalized to me. And then <clears throat> we can obviously have, you know, a lot of people meet up in those worlds. So, um, and then outside of that, you know, that, that sort of virtual space that each person has, um, we want to create a whole lot of other just really cool features and extensions of the app that we have now that would be um, that will work really well in in, a, in multiplayer environments. And then, lastly, um, you know, to also to create virtual spaces or virtual worlds within the VVverse for the brands uh, and licensors and artists that we work with. Sorry, that was a bit long winded. <laughs> Damn, that that was awesome. No, no, you're just. You're just fine. And, and there was, can I just, I want to piggyback this question and I'll let somebody else ask one after that. And it's not actually for you, Dan, it's for Jeremy. So Jeremy, you are a brand guru. You are like the goat, like you brought Pokemon <laughs> to life here in the United States. Jeremy, are, are one of your brands partnered with Vivi? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's put it this way. Um, I don't know if I can answer anything that's a forward looking statement uh, on behalf of my organization because we, we are tied into a publicly traded company or, or really on behalf of anything that uh, is happening at Vivi. I will say this. 
Um, where I have excelled in the past is in developing companies around big brands and licenses. And currently, we're the global partner for Pokemon, Fortnite, Roblox, Coco Melon. We own Squishmallows, which is one of the biggest plush brands in the world. Actually, number one now. Um, and I've, I've worked on massive number of big kids and collector brands. What I have seen from Vivi, what I have seen from the team there, um, is the most sophisticated approach and the earliest approach, both to the licensing universe and to the concept of building a company around third party licenses. Um, will there be more crossover with brands that, you know, that, that I am involved with? I, I wouldn't be shocked, but I certainly am not the one that could make those types of, uh, of, uh, announcements. Is that fair to say, Dan? <laughs> Uh, no comment. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> So just just for everybody in the crowd, that's your Pokemon answer. So stop DMing me about when Pokemon. No. Shit, damn it. That's your Listen, answer. That's that's the answer to everything. I mean, look, here's here, the the reality is that um, I will. Uh, you know, it's clear to me that it, in any marketplace that you walk into, you can assess who the leader is, who's signing the big licenses, who's driving the significant business. And markets often start out um, more monopolistic than fragmented because somebody got a jump. And, um, and then over the course of time, uh, the market gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's impossible to sustain with one company. But by the time it fully matures, you've got massive entities. That happened in toys over a long, long period of time. I'm thrilled that you know we're part of that mix. Um, in 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 the in the NFT in the digital space, um, I don't think I've ever seen a company execute early with big organizations as effectively as Vivi and as effectively as Ecomi. Like they are uh, so far ahead of the general trend. And like I said, I've said this before, but three years ago when David and Dan and Al came in and we discussed it, um, I had no clue. Like it was so foreign to me, the concept of digital assets. And now it's just so clear, not just to me, but to everyone that spends any time understanding blockchain or understanding uh, where we're going in terms of the virtual economy and virtual goods. And um, so the, the net net of what I'm saying to you right now is I wouldn't be surprised at anything that these guys pull off because they actually have demonstrated success where a lot of other people are just barely dipping their toes in. Thank you, Jeremy. That, that was, man, that was, that was really awesome. And shout out to the Omi crew for, you know, doing it the way it's supposed to be done. Um, but my next question kind of piggybacks off of what Jeremy and Nikhil said prior to this. So one of my things, me personally, what caught my eye kind of in invest in an investing kind of way was your licensing. You guys have gotten great licenses through, you know, through different, you know, companies and whatnot. So how did you guys kind of gain those licenses and what kind of licenses have you guys gained from certain companies? If you can mention what they are, we'd, we'd love it. Uh, basically, we sacrificed um, 10 years of our life by compressing it in one year. And, uh, <laughs> and I think we sacrificed a few chickens or something along the way as well. <laughs> There's definitely a chicken or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it was really a very gradual process um you know this g going back three or four years ago when we first approached the uh, initial licensors and, and obviously having somebody uh, on the team like al um and for those of you who don't know um we're re referring to alfred khan uh the man the legend who basically brought pokemon to the world as as you know it uh, and he because of his uh you know huge experience in the world he was able to connect us with uh, I guess I would say connect us with people further up the chain than if we were just sort of going in and, and knocking on the door. <clears throat> um, and that was a bit of a blessing because I sort of found that, you know, the more higher up uh, people that we worked with uh, in the licensing agencies, they, you know, these guys are really thinking, they're not thinking about what's out on the shelves now because they were thinking about that three years ago. So they really were... Uh, I guess I won't say open in the beginning, but they were at least considerate of the idea that, you know, everything's going digital. They know that. They know that people spend a lot of money in the digital space. And I guess our proposition to them was, <clears throat> you know, they don't really need to do much in terms of work. They just need to give us a normal licensing deal like 
uh, like anything else. And then from there, <clears throat> David and I are very tenacious people and we would fly back to the States uh, or where, where, wherever the licensors were, you know, once every two or three months and we'd give them an update, show them the, the progress on the app, let them know what other licensors have signed on. And, you know, really over a two or three year period, <coughs> uh, it, it just started to build and build. And, we, and, you know, we started building up rapport with these guys and they really started to see the vision that we had. Um, and, and, and like I say, it was low risk for them. And I really do applaud all of the, the licensors who did come on with us early because, you know, we, we were just nobodies from nowhere with an idea. Um, and, uh, and obviously, you know, the, those people who came on early, early on um, have, have, have also been blessed with the uh, success of, of VV's growth so far. That's awesome, Dan. My next question is, it's very similar to my last question. So when you guys initially started and gathering all the licenses, was there kind of a thought in process that you guys were going to create AR and VR? Because, uh, because correct me if I'm wrong, guys, I haven't seen too much AR and VR in the NFT space. Um, so was that always kind of a, a vision of yours? Or was that more so just kind of something that just kind of happened after the licensing? Uh, no, that was actually key from the very beginning because, you know, for us, as I mentioned earlier, it was always about the experience. And, you know, one of the... I mean, you know, for David, who owns collectible, you know, retail chains around the world, he every single day, you know, he's selling statues of Batman or Spider-Man um, or, you know, your favorite characters. And so we know that <clears throat> there's a huge physical component to collecting. And uh, with the lucky timing of, you know, AR basically becoming ubiquitous on um, devices, we really saw that as, as an opportunity to basically, you know, bring the digital into the physical world. And we always, we always had an inkling that it might have some virality, you know, that if you could stand next to Batman or stand next to Harley Quinn, um, but it went obviously 10x more viral than, uh, than we thought. So, um, yeah, the, all of the features that are in the app now, from the feed to the market, the AR, the showrooms, basically all of those were were there almost from from day one awesome awesome dan all right yeah i've got to so i've got to ask you guys a very serious question so it's probably going to come from your communications director now <sighs> because i'm getting a lot of dms about it there's the there where's there's the when the buybacks and one of the questions that actually came to me was there was supposed to be uh, about uh, they they're estimated about sixty million dollars in um, sales, um, and a percentage is supposed to be locked away. Is there plans in the next several months, next year or two, that there will be buybacks, or is that something that is still just in limbo because of the way the projects we rolled out? Um, a, li a little bit of everything. Um, so obviously, as I mentioned, this year has been just absolutely insane in terms of the growth, and we've had to focus. A lot, a lot on really just, you know, keeping the engine going in the background. Um, and number two is the, you know, obviously we're doing a big um, migration to immutable at the moment. So we've really <clears throat> allocated uh, or, or sorry, set aside, you know, most of the, uh, the tokenomics for post uh, immutable. Um, and then the other side of it is that you know, we are, you know, as a business, we are also dealing with a lot of regulation. <clears throat> you know, as VV grows and gets more attention, uh, we need to be very careful about how the company, you know, positions itself. Um, and that means that, you know, there are lawyers, accountants, everyone who is looking at, you know, the craziness that's happened over the last eight months and helping to advise us on how to move forward. So it's not really a, 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 an issue of, um, you know, that we're just not doing it because of whatever. It's everything is really a step-by-step -step process in this business because it is such a new, uh, such a new space. Well, that satisfies me, but I don't know if it's going to satisfy the haters. Um, I have a marketing Probably. question. <laughs> I have a marketing question now for you guys. And one of the the marketing question is why? Where was the marketing? Like a lot of people come out firing on all four cylinders in this space with 
ads and, and, and promotions and billboards in the middle of Times Square, but you guys seem to have taken a much different approach to this. And, you know, maybe give us a little insight on why it's a little bit of a slower rollout. I guess um, <clears throat> Acomi and Vivi has always been a, a slow growing beast. You know, um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have one foot in the real world and one foot in the crypto world. So while one foot is trying to move at, you know, a thousand miles per hour, as as things have to do in crypto, <clears throat> um, the other foot is moving at a, uh, you know, at a normal rate. Um, now, I, I would say probably what happened is that uh, back in the, you know, early days in, in January, um, you know, both myself and Reese and, and some other members of the team, we were doing a lot of AMAs in the crypto space just to help, you know, raise awareness of the project. And then from there, <coughs> um, we started to get a lot more, uh, obviously our signups started increasing quite dramatically. Um, and I, I, I really just think it, it had sort of some form of critical mass and just really started snowballing from there. Um, like I mentioned, you know, one, one person would, would uh, take a photo in AR with them standing next to Batman and another person be, would be like, whoa, how did you do that? And the, the, the app itself just started to get a lot of traction <clears throat> on its own. Um, and, you know, this wasn't, I mean, obviously we hoped the business was going to be successful. I mean, I, I remember even back last year, right before we launched in October, Dave and I were just, you know, sitting around the table looking at the app thinking, oh man, I really hope someone, you know, buys a, buys a Batman, you know, Todd 100, because that was the first collectible we put out. Um, and we did have plans to, you know, roll out ads, to do all of that kind of stuff. We had companies lined up to, you know, help us with the, with the digital market, marketing and, and targeting specific users. But then we actually found that, you know, the community, you know, honestly, bless them, um, basically just stepped up and started doing videos and, uh, you know, starting groups. And, you know, they really helped contribute to the, you know, to the snowball effects that, um, that has turned Vivi into what it is to today. So <clears throat> from our perspective, we were sort of like, and, and even up till now, I mean, and, and, and I won't say that we don't do marketing now, you know, we do a lot of marketing, but we don't really do much in the way of paid marketing. Um, and, and for the reason being, even to this day, you know, our drops are still selling out with within seconds or less than a second. So there's not really much point for us to, go out there now and start putting out paid promotion. You know, our community is so active um, and there are always um, <clears throat> new users coming into the app every day. So, yeah, the, the basically the plan was there to, to start doing that and we thought we would have to, have to do that to help, uh, you know, support the business growth in the first year. But uh, like I say, you know, we were very, very lucky and very blessed to have such a, uh, a committed community. Well, and, Dan, 